All right, let's talk about that feeling every sysadmin knows, that mix of excitement and pure terror right before a major software upgrade. Today, we're diving into the community war stories from the jump between Proxmox VE8 and 9. For some folks, it was a total walk in the park. For others, well, it was an absolute nightmare. You know, I think this quote from a user just perfectly sums up the entire experience. It's a fantastic analogy. It really all boils down to whether you're making simple pasta or, you know, accidentally setting your entire kitchen on fire. And this lays out the two roads we're going to travel down. On one hand, you've got the vanilla path. You follow the directions, keep it simple, and everything just works. But then there's the chaos path, where all that creativity and complexity leads to a full-blown, fire alarm blaring kind of disaster. So first up, let's talk about the dream, the absolute best case scenario. These are the users who clicked upgrade, went to make a coffee, and came back to a perfectly happy purring server. They're the ones who make the rest of us just a little bit jealous. An hour. Seriously? That's not even an upgrade. That's a lunch break. This is the kind of story that shows you how smooth this can be. It's a total non-event, which in the sysadmin world is a massive win. A real flex. And you can just feel the confidence here. I mean, when someone calls their server a tank, you know they trust it. It feels unbreakable. And that's exactly what makes the stories from the other side so much more shocking. Of course, not everyone's tank just rolled on through without a scratch. Now we get to the middle ground, the butt club. You know these folks. Their upgrade was fine, but... And that butt is where all the good stories begin. So in these cases, the main server didn't just brick itself, but all the special, customized stuff started to break. One person had to fight with their GPU pass-through. Another discovered their backups were suddenly write-only. And a third just watched their whole mesh network collapse. These aren't minor problems when they're mission critical. And this user, I mean, they just perfectly captured the pure hair-pulling frustration of it all. What on earth is the point of a backup if you can't restore from it? It's a complete paradox. A backup in name only. And now, now we arrive at the main event. The part of the upgrade where a true villain finally shows its face. For a lot of unlucky admins, the real fight didn't even begin until after they thought they were done. Right after they hit that final reboot. Just think about it for a second. You've done all the prep, you've run all the commands, you see the finish line. But then, after that reboot, you're suddenly face to face with an unexpected, incredibly frustrating final boss. Yep. That's it, the grand unified bootloader. This humble little piece of software turned into the single biggest point of failure, the one thing standing between a successful upgrade and a very, very quiet server room. This is what was so maddening about the whole thing. The server wasn't actually dead. You could ping it. It was on, it was alive, but it was completely locked down. No shell, no SSH, no web UI. As one user put it, their powerful server had become a very expensive paperweight. So how do you beat this boss? Well, it's a whole manual recovery quest. You've got to boot the machine from a live USB stick, mount your broken file system, use some command line wizardry like Chi Root to get inside, and then manually reinstall the bootloader. And of course, pray it works. Definitely not for the faint of heart. So given this wild landscape of easy wins and total disasters, how do people get through it? What are the lessons we learned from the trenches? What's the community's secret handshake for survival? This right here shows you just how much of a lottery it could be. One user's modern UEFI-based system completely blew up. Meanwhile, their older machine with a simple BIOS, it upgraded without a single issue. A total coin flip, depending on the hardware. And you know what? Sometimes the most logical solution is just to throw in the towel. This user knew they could have spent hours troubleshooting, but they decided a tactical rage quit and a fresh install was a way better use of their time. And you gotta respect that. But for those who were determined to push through, the community shared its secret weapons. Some people found amazing helper scripts on GitHub. A huge tip was to run the official check script twice, once before the upgrade and again right after but before you reboot. And of course, the sysadmin's greatest tool of all, healthy paranoia. So after hearing all of these stories, from the smooth sailing to the weekend ruining bootloader fights, what's the big takeaway? What's the one thing you really need to know if you're staring at that upgrade button? Honestly, it all seems to boil down to one thing, complexity. 
If your server is a standard plain vanilla install, you're probably gonna be just fine. But if you've got a highly customized setup with weird firmware, custom bootloaders, complex pass-through, you are basically rolling the dice and hoping for the best. And that really just leaves us with the two realities of a major upgrade, doesn't it? It's either gonna be over in an hour and you feel like a genius, or it's gonna be 3 a.m. on a Sunday, you're staring at a blinking cursor, and you start seriously wondering if you should have become a baker instead.